Thank you, Lee. Sing about ancient words. And you know, there are many people who look at this word. It's being ancient, and it's uh, not just ancient, uh, ancient it's uh, out of date. Well, uh, the more I study the word, the more I find it's very much in date. It's as relevant Amen. today as it has ever been. We've been dealing with spiritual warfare. And the fact of the matter is, and as you've heard me speak for many weeks, we are in a spiritual battle every day. Sometimes it's quite obvious, the temptations and the things that we encounter in life. It's quite obvious we're in a battle. And sometimes it's not. Especially those times when we don't notice it is probably when we're the most vulnerable. But the fact is, and rest assured, if you're alive and breathing, you are in a spiritual battle. Over the last few weeks, we've been discussing the armor of God, the armor of God. And, and we've looked at the first three pieces of the armor and, and, and we put those armors on. And if you remember, as we talked about it, those should have come on at the time of our conversion. And in fact, as we look at and we're going to review it here in a second, we looked at the, uh, the Greek a little bit in terms of the tenses, and it's a snapshot of what had happened in the past. And let's look at that, verses, uh, Ephesians 6, verses 15, 14 and 15. And it says, stand firm, therefore, having girded, that's past tense, it's something that we have already done, at the time of our conversion, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having girded, having put on, having shod is a snapshot of what had already taken place. And having those things, we are to stand firm. These items, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, uh, the preparation of the gospel of peace came when Jesus was accepted as Lord and Savior. These all believers have. But now we're going to look at the shield of faith, our title today, the armor of God, part four, the faith, talking about our faith. Ephesians 6, verse 16. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I also want to back this up with a reading from 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9. Peter tells us to be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, it prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we look at your word today, and we're looking at this thing called faith, Lord, we know that it's, 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 it's got to be more than just simply believe. It's got to have an action on our part. Lord, help us in our faith. Help us as we look towards Jesus. Forgive us for when we've fallen down in our faith and succumbed to the things of this world. Lord, speak to us through your word today. May we feel your presence. And may Jesus be glorified today. For it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Back in the 1800s, back in the late 1800s, there was a crowd that gathered around Niagara Falls. How many people have been to Niagara Falls? That's a, uh, we were there a few years ago. It, it, it's, it's, it's a great distance from the American side to the Canadian side across those falls. Well, there was a cable strung across there, and a man, a famous man by the name of Charles Blondin, 
walked over it on a tightrope. He was considered the world's greatest tightrope tight walker. And when he went out on the cable, he tested the cable, he took his long bar for balance, and he walked across to the other side, and the crowd was amazed. That wasn't enough. He turned around, and he walked all the way back. Well, it was, everybody cheered, and so he went to the crowd, and he asked a question. And, 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 uh, uh, he said, you know, he would cross the falls again with someone on his back. And so he, he picked out a man from the crowd and blonde and asked, do you believe that I can carry you across? And the man said, oh, yes. Oh, yes, sir. I, I believe you can do that. And he says, well, come on, hop on. And he goes, not on your life. <laughs> no way, Jose. You know, it wasn't going to happen. And it went on. He started picking out one after another. Oh, yes, I believe you can do it, but not with me. <laughs> not with me. And then finally, a young guy came out of the crowd. He came to the front and, and blotted and asked the question again. Do you believe that I can carry you across safely? And the man says, I think you can. And he says, are you willing to let me? And he says, as a matter of fact, I will. And he climbed on the man's back. The young man climbed on the expert's back, blonded, stepped onto the rope, paused momentarily, and then moved across the falls without uh, any problems, without any difficulties. There were many in that crowd who believed that Blondin could do it. But there was only one willing to trust him to do it. You know, it's interesting. We are called to live by faith. We often look at other people. It's great, yes, live by faith. And yes, it's great when you do it. What about each of us? What about each of us? You know, we are called to live by faith. We are called to trust God in every aspect of life. Now, I just want to throw this in. We talked about stewardship uh, the other day. We, we trust God with our eternity, but we won't trust him with our wallets. But I'm not going there today. But understand, we are to trust God with everything. With everything. Romans 1, verse 17, Paul writes, he says, for it is, it is it, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, and he's quoting from Habakkuk here, Habakkuk 2.4, if you care to look it up. But the righteous man shall live by faith. It's interesting. Paul writes that, uh, quotes that verse about three different times in, in several of his writing. The righteous man shall live by faith. Concerning living by faith, Paul says to the Corinthians, in, in 2 Corinthians 5.7, he says, For we walk by faith... Not by sight. Think about it. If we can see it, we can hold it, we can feel it, there's not much to believe, is there? There's no faith involved. But you know, we, oftentimes we don't see these things of faith that we have to act on, that we have to live by. Uh, uh, Dave read from earlier Hebrews 11. You know, go back and read that whole chapter, chapter 11 of Hebrews. It's called the Hall of Fame of faith, the hall of fame of faith. Those that stepped out on faith and did mighty things for God in the Old Testament. Let's look at a couple verses. Uh, Hebrews 11 verses 1 and 2. He says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. For by it, the men of old gained approval. There were folks in the Old Testament that did great works for God because they stepped out in faith. Today we're talking about faith. Faith as our shield. Faith as our shield. Let's go back and look at Ephesians 6 verse 16. He says, in addition to all, take, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 
Now we're going to pick this apart just a little bit. And right off the bat it says, in addition to all, talking about where we had come from, talking about those things that have already proceeded, those things that we have already done, we have already put on the belt of truth. We have already put on the breastplate of righteousness. We have already put the shoes on on the preparation of the gospel of, of peace. We talked about those things. Those things happen when we, when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We should have those things. We don't always use them, but we have them. We've already put those on. And now he says, in addition to that, now we got to pick up, pick up. He says, taking up the shield of faith. Taking up the shield of faith. And, and, and here, bear with me a second. I, I get into some of the grammar or something, uh, especially in the Greek. And here, this is also in the aortist tense, meaning it's a snapshot of what happened in the, in the past, but uh, the Greek has different tenses. And this is in the active voice where the others were not. And in the active voice, uh, it, it's a little bit different. This is something that we continue to do. It wasn't a one-time thing that we did in the past. You know, you put on your shoes, and once your shoes are on, they're on, right? You put on a belt, once it's on, it's on. But here, take up the shield of faith. And, 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 and if we were to translate that a little more fully, it is continue to take up. We are taking up our shield continually. Continually. Paul repeats uh, from Habakkuk, talking about the righteous man shall live by faith. And Paul gives that instruction because it is something that a lot of us slip in doing. And, and, and when we talk about faith here, sometimes we don't live the way we should, do we? You know, we, we, we ask for forgiveness of sin. Why? Because we let the shield of faith slip from time to time. We do. And I, I want to talk about the shield here. It's interesting to get into it. You know, in, in the Greek, there's a couple of different words for shield. And when we think of a Roman shield, we think of this little round thing that you hold. And you got a sword in one hand and you kind of defend yourself with the little round shield. That's not the word that's being used here. That little round shield is nice, but it doesn't protect the whole body. What they're talking about here, the word that they're using, and it's interesting... Uh, in, in the Latin, the word uh, we get our word door from, it's a, it, it's a shield that's about, uh, it, it's this shield used by the Roman soldiers about two and a half foot wide and about four foot tall. You got to remember, folks, we're a little shorter back then, so it was almost as tall as a man, uh, not quite, but it was pretty good size. This was the battle shield. It was several layers of wood overlaid with linen or leather, and they had nice designs on the front. Before going into battle, the soldier would take his shield and prepare it. And he would prepare it by soaking in water, because as that leather soaked up water, those flaming arrows that came in would set the wood on fire. So they would prepare their shield. And the soldier... Never, especially those that we're talking the regular foot soldier here, he would never deploy alone. He would go into battle with a group and they would close ranks. And if you look at the picture here, you can, you can see there was a wall in the front, there's a wall to the side, and those that were behind put the shield on top. So they were covered on all sides. When the arrows and the rocks and the things were being hurled at them, they were protected. They were protected. Like the Roman soldier, the Christian is very rarely deployed alone. Very rarely. You know, there's no place in the scripture that talks about the Lone Ranger Christian. We're in this together. And you know, when it comes to defending against the flaming arrows, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. It's nice to have somebody with you. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't go into battle alone. We don't face it. We face it with other believers. We hold one another accountable. We encourage, we support, we strengthen one another. 
We don't defend alone against the flaming arrows of the evil one. What about these flaming arrows? That was very common in Paul's day when they got the big battles. They had arrows that were dipped in some sort of a pitch or tar. Very flammable, but they would light it. And when you shot the arrow, the speed of the arrow would not extinguish the flames. And, and oftentimes, if the soldier did not prepare his, uh, his shield, it would strike the uh, shield and they'd be, look like a porcupine. So many arrows in it. But the air flaming arrows would set the shield on fire. And sometimes they would drop their shield because it was a blaze. When they dropped their shields, then they were open to spears, the rocks, and whatever else they were hauling their way. He would drop his defenses. It required, it required the soldier to maintain his shield. He had to be diligent to soak that shield to minimize the hazards of a flaming arrow. Do we work at maintaining our faith? You know, some days my faith just isn't as strong as it is on other days. You know, how much time do we spend in the Word? How much time do we spend in prayer? There are some days I'm ready to take on everything, and there's other days that they're going to catch me short. We must firmly grasp the shield of faith long before the attack comes. Because the fact is, it's not a question of if we'll be attacked. It's a question of when and how hard. Let's look closely at that shield of faith. The Old Testament image. It was an image that we see throughout the Old Testament, especially in the Psalms. But it talks about the image of God protecting his people. Uh, Genesis 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. Your reward will be very great. Psalms 18, verse 30. As for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. God will protect us. Psalms 115, 9 through 11. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help in their shield. Looks like a trend there to me. Trusting in the Lord. You know, the, uh, the, the difference between trust and believe, if you will, is, is and faith, they're all closely related. To trust someone or to trust something means you also have faith in it. You believe they're going to do what they're going to do. Our shield is a firm resolve, a resolute to have confidence in the Lord. When temptations burn, when circumstances are adverse, when doubt assails us, when shipwreck threatens, faith looks up. Faith will look up and say, I believe God. I believe God. You see, the faith mentioned here, we're not talking about a saving faith. That's something else different. That as we talk about salvation, and I'm going to talk about salvation in a couple of weeks when we talk about the shield or we talk about the helmet of salvation and we get to that part of the armor. But we're talking about a living of faith. The faith that we live by every day. And, and it's, a, it's a trust in the promises and in the power of God. Faith is a defensive weapon which will protect us from Satan's fiery darts. You see, Satan shoots these fiery darts at our hearts and our minds. With what? With lies, blasphemous, blasphemous thoughts, hateful thoughts about others, doubts, a burning desire for sin. If we don't quench these fiery darts with our faith, they will light a fire within us. And then we find ourselves disobeying God and we find ourselves sinning against him. We must be diligent. We can never drop our shield for a moment. When we look up and say, I believe God, do we know what it is that we believe? You know, the world says, many people will say, I believe in God. 
And some people, uh, you know, that, uh, and we're talking about a lot of the unsaved, they say, well, I believe there is a God. You know, James tells us that even the demons believe and shudder. You know, it, it's, it, it's a belief, but, but they, they, they actually will say, I believe God is in control. You know, we look at the world around us, and we've said as much here. I believe God is in control. God is on the throne. God is taking care of things that's around us. But, you know, sometimes our actions betray us. Our actions don't confirm what it is that our lips say. Yet so few know what God has said. There's few who really understand what God has promised. You know, we, we talked about ancient words. We sung about that. Do we know what the promises of God's are? Yeah, I mean, we can't claim the promises unless we know what they are. I think there was a song written about that. I heard that on the radio here a while back. Got to know the promises of God to claim them. Uh, we, we, we've, got, uh, we've got to know what God has said. You know, oftentimes people wonder why God doesn't do what, he, what, what he's supposed to do because they haven't read the word of God. They don't know the word of God. Here in a couple of weeks, uh, along with the helmet of salvation, I'll be talking about the sword of the spirit. And what does the word say about the sword of the spirit? It is the word of God. And so we're going to talk about the Word of God here in a couple of weeks. Uh, we, we, we must understand and we must know what God has said to believe in the trust. Faith will show itself because we've acted on these words that we have trusted. The book of James also has a lot to say about putting our faith to work. Remember what James has to say about that. James 2 verse 17 says, So even so faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. We're to act on our faith. Faith is an active word. It is not passive. And, and just standing up and saying, I have faith, I believe God, is not enough. We've got to act on those things. God's word guides us through difficult areas. God's word, and as we believe in him, uh, we, will, we will be defended. But, but we've got to know his word. For, for example, and this is a verse that I've used many times, and I want to go and explore it again because it's a good example. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.13. Uh, we got a couple of promises of God here. It says, no temptations has overtaken you, but such is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide a way of escape so that you will be able to endure it. Two promises. Two promises God makes. And these are things that we can claim. One, God's not going to give us any temptation, will not allow us, that God doesn't tempt, but God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can endure. And with the temptation, the second promise is he'll provide a way of escape. Here is the problem. Our problem is our responsibility to take that way of escape. We get tempted and sometimes we like being tempted. Sometimes we got to investigate that temptation just a little bit more. And then before you know it, we're sucked in and we find ourselves in disobedience. We find ourselves in sin. We find things that have happened. And we blame God by saying, God, you allowed me to become tempted beyond what I was able. Whereas we have failed. We have dropped that shield of faith. And we failed to take that way of escape that God has given us. There's responsibility on our part. Is our faith active or is it passive? We've got to know the word of God. What has God called you to do and are you doing it? I've talked about this many times. You know, people say, well, what does God want me to do? And the, the fact is, are you doing right now those things that you know God is calling you to do? You know, have you helped your neighbor? Were you kind to that person? Yeah, I mean, we're talking the everyday things. Are you already doing what you know that God has called you to do? And then when we come up to temptation, oftentimes when we get those attacks, we know what to do. The question is, do we do?
do it. Our faith is it active. We need to be about the business of God. We need to put our faith to work. Uh, based solidly on the word of God. And if not, we're just simply waiting for this, uh, for the devil to attack. First Peter 5 verse 8. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to about to devour. God, uh, the devil wants to take uh, as many Christians with him as he can, or destroy our witness. When will Satan strike? The instant our shield is down. When we drop our shield of faith, that's you can. Sure bet that is when he's going to strike. We have to work on our faith. We have to maintain our shield. We have to beef it up. We have to be in the word. We have to be in prayer. And we have to be active in doing it. First Peter 5 verse 9. That next verse says, But resist him. Speaking of the devil. But resist him. Firm in your faith. Knowing that the same experience of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. Resist the devil. How? By being firm in your faith. Resist him. Take that way of escape. Do those things that you know that you're supposed to be doing. Resist him. And we're not alone. We have brethren around the world resisting him. And we need to take encouragement from that. We need to give encouragement to those that are resisting the devil. We need to be firm in the faith. And we need to be in the word. We need to be connected to God in prayer. The devil urges us to go one way. But we know God calls us to go his way. And we must be trusting God all along the way for everything else. You know, we don't always see what it is. But we've got to be faithful. We have to have the faith. Knowing that God is going to cover us. 1 John 5 verse 4. For whatever is born of God. Overcomes the world. And this is the victory. That has overcome the world. Our. Faith. Our. Faith. This is the living faith. That we were talking about. Our active faith. Will give us. The victory. Are we taking up the shield of faith continually? Here again, that word is taking up. It is picking up continually. Not putting it down. Keeping it up continually. Is our faith active or is it passive? And James tells us that an inactive faith is dead. Our faith is dead. Our faith has got to be active. Active. Is your faith in God? Do you believe Him? And if we believe Him, are we acting on our faith? Are we living by faith? Are we walking by sight what we can see or by faith? We are called to walk by faith, holding that shield of faith. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we lift up your word, and Lord, that we might internalize your word, that we might live by the word that we know, because your word is true, that we might be active in living our faith. Lord, there may be someone here this morning, there may be someone listening to this message online. Lord, we pray that there may be someone that, that does not know Jesus, does not know the saving faith, who have a living faith. Lord, we pray that your spirit will move, your spirit will touch, and the Lord, those individuals could come to a saving knowledge of Jesus, that they may live by faith. Lord, I just pray that you move among us today, that we go out from here holding high our shield of faith. We ask that you watch over us, that you bless us, and Lord, that you protect us, that you might be our shield. Lord, thank you for your presence this morning. And may we glorify Jesus, for it's in his holy name we pray. Amen.